What's up guys, it's Sean here. Welcome to another episode of The Computer Scientist. Today we will be investigating the difference between discrete and continuous environments on OpenAI Gym. In the previous video we created a random agent to play through the card pollen environment. So in this video we will be adapting that agent to be able to play some of the other environments. So back in our Jupyter Notebook, we have the card pull environment set up as well as an agent class that decides whether to return an action of pushing the card left or right, depending on the current tilt of the pull given in the state vector. If this seems unfamiliar, I've put a link to the previous video in the description below. For this environment, we have two distinct options for what action to return, push left or push right. So this environment has a discrete action space. So now let's test out our agent on some other environments. Okay, so here we have the mountain car, which is also discrete, so our agent should work for this. But we'll first change our get action method back to returning a random action index. Okay, that went well. Now how about the mountain car continuous? This one has a different type of action space, box, but if we run this, we get an exception saying box doesn't have any attribute n, which we had set our action size to. So now checking out the wiki for this environment on GitHub, if we look at the original mountain car, it says the three distinct actions are push left, do nothing, or push right. But comparing this to the continuous one, it only has one action field, which now takes in a value ranging from negative to positive for the force to apply in the left or right direction. So this is a continuous action space since it has an infinite number of possible action values over a continuous range. Now let's compare the attributes of the two types of action spaces to figure out what we need to change to handle this type of environment. So the original mountain car has these attributes, but for the continuous version we no longer have an n attribute, instead we have a low and a high. So printing these out, we see that they are both a single element array where low specifies the lower limit of the action value and high specifies the upper limit. Okay, so we can use this information to return a continuous action value with our agent. So ignoring the discrete option for now, when returning an action, we are going to use NumPy's random uniform function to return a random value uniformly selected over the given range. And this conveniently takes in a lower and upper limit and a shape size. So we can define these in our constructor and then just pass them in. Now when we run this, it works. Okay, so finally, let's adapt our agent to be able to return the right actions for both discrete and continuous action spaces. So we'll first figure out the class type of a discrete action space with the type function, and then define a variable is discrete, being true if the action space is discrete. Then we'll just use an if statement to determine which action type to return in the case of discrete or continuous action spaces. Now let's test this out on some new environments. Let's try Acrobot. So this is the discrete one. Now for Pendulum, which is continuous. And now one last one. Perhaps Frozen Lake from Toy Text. So this one has both a discrete observation and action space, and it also has a different rendering because it's so simple it only has 16 states that can be displayed on the command line. Well, that's basically it for creating a simple agent to play through any type of environment. In the next video, we will be applying a reinforcement learning algorithm called Q-learning to our agent to allow it to learn how to maximize reward from playing through an environment. But anyways, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you found it useful and I'll see you next time. Bye!